Hi, and happy Sunday. Thanks for clicking on this video, and I hope you enjoy it. Today, I am going to bring you some faux food. So you know how Valentine's Day is coming up, and you go out for those fancy dinners, and you have the fancy dessert. Well, what if you can make it yourself? So let's get into this first DIY. All right, guys, I am going to be making a cup topper for my Ray Dunn cup. Now this has a topper on it. It looks like a little gnome and it's super cute for Valentine's Day, but I wanted to switch it out and make it more my style. So the first thing I do is I take this cardboard and I am making the base for my cup topper. So, and I wanted it to be the same shape as the Ray Dunn cup, because you know they're not perfectly round. They are kind of, you know, I don't know. They look handmade, so they're not perfect. So then I made the first topper a little bit bigger than the actual cup so that it would sit on top of the cup. And then I made the second cardboard round a little smaller so that it would fit inside of the cup so that it would stay and not get knocked over. Now I am just taking a foam ball. I am cutting it in half with this spackle knife and you can use anything to cut these in half with. Now this kind of left a jagged edge and that's okay. You can sand foam with foam and it works perfectly. And then I have a perfectly even surface. Now I went to glue this down on the bottom side. Don't do that. <laughs> glue it down on the right side. So after I glued this down to the bottom side, I realized, oh gosh, that's the wrong side. What am I doing? So <laughs> I took that off quickly and cleaned that up as best I could. And we're going to glue it to the top. So after that is in place, I place it back on the cup to make sure that um, I like the way it looks. And now we're going to start making the actual topper. So I got the caulking from Dollar Tree and I got the putty knife from Dollar Tree, which is actually a decorating knife. They have more stuff. And then I got some soft spackle that I'm gonna use later. So right now I'm using the caulk to go around the cardboard to cover up all those edges. and I go around the whole piece of cardboard and then I actually cover the cardboard and I'm going to cover the top of the foam ball as well, just to give it a nice flat surface, which honestly is not necessary. I could have just stopped at the cardboard and that would have been good. This is my very first time at making these and so I was just experimenting, honestly. <laughs> And then I put more caulking on there just to get a nice smooth surface. And I spread it around with my cake knife. And now I'm trying to pick a tip. Now, I thought I picked the tip that I wanted, but in reality, I did not. And if you see those cupcakes sitting there, I made those with expandable foam. And I let my granddaughter decorate one. So this is a great craft that you can do with kids as well. Now my soft spackling was kind of dried out, but that's okay. You just add a little bit of water and I would recommend using just a spray bottle so you can spritz the water in there because you still, you still want it to be dry. If you get it too runny, it will just look like it's melting frosting. <laughs> it will just slide off of your form. So you don't want that to happen. You want it to still be pretty dry. So do not like go put it under the sink or anything. You want to just spritz the water a little bit at a time until you get it to the consistency that you want. And then I added the seashell pink to the mixture and I mixed that up really good. And I moved my tip to a smaller bag and I thought this tip was gonna work, but honestly, I really didn't like it in the end. I did hot glue the tip in place around the bag um, with my low temp glue gun. And I'm filling this bag just like you would cake frosting, and then I go to put it on, and the tip is a little bit smaller than, well, it's a lot smaller than what I was expecting or wanting, 
And so I'm not really a cake decorator. <laughs> so maybe I could have got the same look. I don't know, but I would have needed a lot more caulk, not caulk, spackling. I would have needed a lot more spackling and um, I really didn't like the look. So I just filled it in here and there and you could touch it with your finger and um, it was still kind of dry to the touch, which is what you want because you don't want it to be runny and sliding off of your topper or your cupcake or whatever you're trying to decorate. So I just took the knife and smoothed it all out, which honestly, I did not have to put this in a piping bag. I could have just take it, taken it out of the um, canister and spread it on with the cake knife. That would have been a lot easier. But anyway, I thought I was gonna get the look I wanted with this tip, with this cake decorating tip, and I didn't. So I just spread it around with the cake decorating knife and called it a day. I'm going to be making more of these because I really liked how this turned out and I want to practice more. So be on the lookout for those videos. <laughs> so now I'm just trying to decide what color of beads do I want to put on there. I did have some dark gray. I did not have any black, but I do have these beautiful little tiny dainty little pearls. And let me tell you, they were hard to keep a hold of. They went rolling all over the place. It was kind of hard. I had to use these little tiny tweezers to get a hold of them and then just kind of push them into place. Okay, so I used two different sizes of pearls. I used really tiny, actually three because I put the topper on right there. I used a big pearl for the top. I used um, like little tiny pearls and then I used a little bit bigger pearl and I just put them all over the place until I was satisfied. So now I am taking this black lace. This was left over from a previous project and this lace is from burlapfabric.com. It is gorgeous, beautiful. I love it. And I'm going to be ordering more because it is so beautiful. I'm probably going to be ordering more in different colors because I love this lace so much and you get a ton of it. So I take this lace and I am just going to make little pleats around the bottom of this topper. And remember we made a smaller circle of cardboard to go around the bottom to keep it inside the cup. So I just go along the side of that smaller cardboard and I glue this lace around it and I just make little pleats all the way around. Now obviously this little piece is not going to be enough to cover the entire topper, but that's okay. We cut more and I show you how I do it. And I use my spatula to kind of smush it into place. I, I do have my low temp on this. This glue gun has high and low. Okay, so I take off what I think I'm going to need to cover the rest of the topper and I fold it in half and then I just cut it with my fabric scissors. Now you want to use good scissors so that it cuts nice and straight and you don't get any jagged edges. So I literally, that's all I do, fold it in half, cut it, cut it in half, and then I just start gluing it on and pleating it as I go. So I just literally scrunch it up and I use my spatula to kind of push it together to kind of scrunch it up and make little pleats, little ruffles. And that's, that's the kind of look that you're, well, that's the kind of look that I'm going for here. And then I'm just holding it on the bottom by that extra piece of cardboard. And I guess I might have cut that piece out. Anyway, I glued the cardboard together with wood glue. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. It's so beautiful. And then I just touch it up here and there, put little glue here and there just to kind of hold it down. Now I'm going to cover the bottom because I always, I want it to be finished. So if somebody picks it up and looks at the bottom, they're gonna go, oh, there's a bunch of hot glue on it. Well, yeah, because I tried to glue the top on the bottom. So, <laughs> so I am taking this piece of purple felt. I did not have any pink. So I'm using the purple felt. 
and I am going to be hot gluing that onto the bottom. Just to clean that up. And one of my little pearls fell off, so put that back on. There I am. There you go. All finished. And then I cut off any excess and stick it on top of the cup, and it fits perfectly. And there she is. Isn't she beautiful? Now, I did not add a straw. I contemplated. I went back and forth if I wanted to add a straw, and I decided on this one, no. I just wanted to keep it simple and elegant. All right, guys, today is a collaboration with my friends Kiki from Kiki DIY and Tammy from Happiness Created, and we are doing the faux food collaboration. I will have their channels as well as the playlist listed down below in my description box. All right, guys, now I got to show you what Rose Forever sent me. Now, Rose Forever is a, a company that takes real flowers, real roses, and puts them in a box that you can have out year round. Now, they are to last a year if you take care of them properly. And this is the care instructions that it comes with. It is boxed beautifully. And I chose the heart box for Valentine's Day and... I chose, I couldn't remember what color I chose, so I was very excited to open the box because I couldn't remember if I went with the dark gray, a darker black color, or a pink color because, you know, I love the black and pink. I feel like it's so classic and gorgeous, and I just love this box. And I went with pink, so I was very excited. Oh my gosh, these are gorgeous. Now, you could give these to a mama of a baby girl. You could have these in your baby girl's room out all year round. You could have these, I mean, just anywhere you wanted. They are gorgeous. They are not just for Valentine's Day. And they have all different colors and sizes and for every budget. They last up to a year. And I have a coupon code for you that they are to give my viewers $25 off. Coupon code will be down below in my description box as well if you're interested. Are they not gorgeous? I just love these. I was so excited. And I love the hard box. All right, guys, let's get back into these projects. On to the next DIY. Now this one I saw on Pinterest and I believe I also saw Mother Time make something similar. She might have done an apple pie. I'm not sure. She does all kinds of uh, faux foods. If you have not watched her, I will also link her channel down below in my description box because she did give me my inspiration and um, I watch her all the time. So she probably did do an apple pie. <laughs> I know she's done blueberry and I think she's done cherry. I don't remember. So anyway, all I'm doing is I'm taking this sponge from Dollar Tree. Now all this stuff is from Dollar Tree and I got these little dishes during the fall time. They're little chafing dishes and I am taking my truffle, my hazelnut and I am taking, I'm going to be adding some sandstone because I didn't like the hazelnut and truffle together. They didn't, it wasn't a light enough color. So then I do add some sandstone here. So now after I've cut up my sponge and I only used a little bit of it, so you still have a lot more sponge to work with. So we'll be making some more faux food out of the sponge later on. And I just dipped my sponge in there and then um, I thought, you know what? I didn't want to mix, mix up more paint. So I went and got my glove and I am going to be squeezing the paint out of this sponge because the sponge does soak up a bunch of paint. I just added more water and put the sponges in there and it soaked up the paint. I squeezed them out to distribute the paint onto the other sponges and it worked perfectly. So literally you only need a tiny bit of paint because it, it will soak it up and it works perfectly. And then after it's dry, I put it in the chafing dish 
and I might have gotten too much sponge cut, but that's okay. And I just cut them down to pieces to make a bit. And you will see this last sponge, it still had some yellow in the middle. That's okay, just put it down in the dish to where you can't see the yellow. And then I cut this burlap fabric. No, it's not burlap. I cut this drop, drop cloth fabric and I cut it in three strips and we're gonna make like a lattice top. And I glue down three sides first and then I pull up two sides, put the other one across the middle one first and then I glue down that on both sides. Then I pull up the middle, I glue down the middle drop cloth, strip of drop cloth to both sides and then I pull up the two sides on the outside and glue it over the middle on the last one. So I literally use six strips of drop cloth and then uh, you can see better what I'm doing than I probably explained it. <laughs> and then I just cut off the edges and now we're going to distress it with this distressing ink. And I think I used vintage photo, I'm not really sure. I show it, I'm sorry, but anyway, I have four different kinds of ink and I used not the darkest one, but the middle one. Then I spray, I sprinkled it with cinnamon and then I sprinkled some Epsom salt over the top to make it look like sugar. And then I just drizzled on some Mod Podge and just kind of pounced it in. Like I didn't brush it, I just um, tapped it so that the Epsom salt would stay in place. And now I am making the crust around the edges with my drop cloth and I just have a long strip of drop cloth and I'm just gathering it, gathering it to make it look like the edging of the apple pies like my grandma used to make. Now, of course, hers was perfect um, that she did with her fingers. I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. But anyway, um, she did put cinnamon sugar on top of her apple pies to make them beautiful, crusted, and then she glazed them with an egg wash. Anyway, that's what I remember from grandma's making apple pies. But so I am making um, the ruffled edge and I think it turns out gorgeous. And I do have my glue gun on low temp. So make sure you have it on low temp. Otherwise use finger protectors because you will burn your fingers. And there we're almost done. So I'm just gonna put some finishing touches on this and I just kind of glue down some little pleats that were kind of sticking up. And then I take my distressing ink around the edges again and I take my Mod Podge and I go around the edges. My brush still has some cinnamon on it, as you can see. So it just kind of rubs it in and makes it look, you know, baked. <laughs> and that's pretty much all I do. I kind of trim the edges just a little bit where they're a little bit more frayed than what I want them to be. And then I'm going to add the embellishments. And we are almost done. So now I took this drop cloth and I took my stamps. I got these from Michaels. And I can link those down below in my description box. And I put these stamps together and I'm making just a little tag. This is something that Mother Time does and I love it. I think that's such an awesome idea. So I just cut a little triangle at the end to kind of make it look like a little flag. And then I'm gonna add some buttons. Add two pearly buttons and a brown button. And then I trim off some of the frayed edges because I don't want it to be too frayed. Just a little bit. And now I'm going to tie just a little tiny jute bow and I'm going to add to those buttons. There it is. What do you think? I 
love it. I think it looks so realistic. Oh my goodness. So cute. Now this could be for fall, obviously, but why not have apple pie all the time? I like apple pie. So this is my first go around at making faux food. So let me know what you think. Which one do you like better? I think these are so awesome. I, I'm hooked. I'm going to be making some more for sure. All right, guys, if you're returning, I want to thank you so much. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. It really helps out my channel. And I love each and every one of you for supporting me and helping me follow my dreams. And do not forget to go over and visit Kiki from Kiki's DIY and Tammy over at Happiness Created and all the other ladies in this playlist. They are going to have some awesome faux foods and I cannot wait to watch. I will have their channels as well as the playlist listed down below in my description box. So let me know what you think. I love this coffee cup topper, this cup topper. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> and oh my goodness. Gorgeous. And there's the bottom. And these roses from Rose Forever, do not forget, I do have a coupon code for you guys. They last a year, so why buy roses once and have them last five days from the florist? You're going to get probably roses for Valentine's Day. You might as well get some that last you for a year. Why would you get some that last a week long? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. And I hope you have a fabulous week, guys.